Okay, so we're all free. Once I was down to the last couple discs, I was able to just grab on this shaft and yank out this uh, hub. Came out with the last couple discs. And something to note is that there's that uh, circlip, that giant circlip on this hub. And behind it, there were two more discs. There was a, a fiber in there first, and then a steel disc on top of that. So now, I have uh, learned two things. The first thing I learned is why this shaft wasn't coming out. And the second thing I learned is that I got another thing to do. This shaft is actually in backwards just for uh, illustration purposes. This shaft actually went in this way. And uh, see that there? That's the remnants of a, I guess what I would call a pilot bearing. And when the pilot bearing let go, well, I'll show you. There's the balls, some of them anyway. And when it let go, it kind of chowdered up the very ends of these splines. So you could pull it out and it would just barely catch and uh, it, would, it would catch on the, the messed up spline, so that's why this shaft couldn't come out. Well, the last step here is to remove this brake drum. Uh, well, after removing the circlip, uh, you can't see it there, I already took it off, but um, I was having a hell of a time taking it off. It really got fetched up right as it got to the edge here. I was even using some pullers, and it just wasn't going, so rather than try to force it off and, you know, make, be a pain in the ass, I'm just going to go from this side. I took off the cap, or it's a, called a quill in the manual. And there's some uh, shims there. So make sure not to mess those shims up and, and keep the, uh, the same shim pack. And there was a circlip on the end of this shaft. Take that off. Now I will digress for a moment. These circlips suck. I guess functionally they're, they're good, but man are they a bitch to get off. So what I did, I had a spare set of tips and for my, uh, is, um, for my Jesus clip pliers. And you can see if it'll focus. That's good enough, I guess. You can see what I did. I, I ground some little chamfers so it perfectly addresses the angled ends of the C-clip in it, and it works pretty good. So, got that off, and just use a soft hammer. This is a brass or bronze hammer, and uh, you can drive that through. Uh, and since I'm going this route, I'm just going to replace all these bearings. I'm replacing the bearings for, for this shaft, I gotta replace the pilot bearing. You know what? Two more bearings. I'm taking the shaft out anyway. I might as well, you know, seals and everything. I'll just go through the entire final drive. Okay, now I'm taking out the uh, rear or the bottom part of the final drive, the bottom shaft that connects to the hub. I've already taken off the cap and there's a big ass cotter pin that goes through there. Really had to give that some influencing to take it off. Now this nut was pretty much almost hand loose or hand tight. This, as I understand, is pretty much like a, a, a nut on your front wheel bearing on a vehicle, on a truck. Uh, you, have, you, you torque it down to cinch the bearings together, then you back it off um, a certain amount just to keep everything together, but if you have it too tight, it will um, cause the bearings to heat up. So, take this all the way off. And there's, uh, let's see, this is just a plain old washer. There we go. That's moving. That's still kind of tight. Actually, what I should have done, hindsight being 2020, I should have put the nut on there just, you know, two or three turns, just so I don't risk damaging that thread. 
but uh, I don't think I damage it. And if I if I did, I can pretty easily dress it with a with a file. Not a big deal. So anyway, so here's the uh, I guess I'd call that the inner bearing. And when I lay this stuff down on the floor, I I try to line it up in order that it came out, so it's easy for me to remember how it goes back together. Of course you have your parts diagrams and everything, but there's really nothing like just paying attention when you're putting it together right off the bat. So I'll see, here's a, what the hell is this thing? Some sort of a cone. It'll probably fall, fall right into the oil sump when I push this shaft through. But there is a, like a conical washer sort of thing there. big boy there's the shaft Ugh. and then on the far side here there's another bearing and of course there are also seals here which I'm going to punch out and replace all right looking over on the hub side of the final drive I peeled out well I was peeling out what I thought was a uh, destroyed oil seal but this is actually just grease and grime. It actually has quite a fair amount of structural integrity to it. Anyway, this is the actual, or part of the actual seal. It came out this way. There's this, uh, like an L cross-section steel washer. And then this big hunk of chunk of rubber. There's no lip. It's not like a lip seal or a spring energized seal. It's just a Pretty much a rectangular cross-section chunk of rubber, and it was oriented like this as it goes in. Now on the shaft that came out, there was a similar arrangement. There's another one of these steel washers, and then another one of these rubber seals. So I really don't know how this sealed, it was kind of strange because it goes like so, and then here's the other seal as it came off the final drive. So the rubber seals, this seals to the housing, and the other rubber there seals to the, uh, the hub or the shaft, but I guess these two pieces seal together just on that flat metal-to-metal -metal surface there. Um, I guess with gear oil it would seal pretty well and you'd have a little bit of weepage and that would be okay because this is a really obviously a horrendously dirty and abrasive environment and I think no matter what kind of dust seal or dirt seal you have it, it, you would just get destroyed. So maybe that's, that's the idea behind this and any oil leakage that you'd have through here would help to just wash away any contaminants and keep the seal fairly clean because this is obviously low pressure, zero pressure pretty much. I don't know, I'm just uh, speculating, but that's how it comes apart. This actually reminds me of an interesting story, you might be interested. My John Deere MC, my little beloved MC, um, a couple years ago the final drive broke. I think I might have a couple videos of, of the repair, yeah I do have a couple videos of that repair because a rock got stuck in the chain went around to the sprocket, the track got really tight, too tight, and it broke the final drive housing. Uh, so my buddy Franco and I repaired it. Actually, he did a lot of the work. I owe, owe a lot of thanks to him for doing that work. But anyway, when we took the final apart to swap all the insides to a different final drive housing, one of these shafts, I think it was the, the upper drive shaft, it wasn't the sprocket drive shaft, but it was the, it was the other one that drove it. The splines, were fucking spiraled. Of course, where the gear rode, it was straight, but once the gear wasn't on it, that, that spline was twisted. And we both looked at it and we said, oh geez, that doesn't look good, but hey, it's still in one piece, so we threw the thing back together and it uh, lives to go another day. 
It's not like I'm going to stop the project and try to source another shaft for a, you know, a, a 60 year old uh, crawler tractor. It was hard enough finding the final drive. Anyway, and then that will be that. I have to cut a couple gaskets. These I'm not going to buy these. I'll just make some gaskets. Not a big deal. Have to make a gasket for this that cap there. Put some new bearings in, and we'll be good to go. So that concludes the next part. I've lost count. This is part three or four, or something like that, of this final drive repair and replacement and steering clutch repair and replacement. Stay tuned for the next video where I will be uh, rebuilding this final drive with all new parts. And then after that, it's back on to the steering clutch and putting all that back together. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay up to date and stay tuned to uh, all the progress going on with this machine. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying these videos. I would definitely appreciate that. And please leave a comment down below if you like. I love, I love receiving comments and, and getting some nice uh, discussion between us gearheads. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, make sure to come on back for more.